Hi, I'm going to be an example of calculating a magnetic field and calculating a magnetic force. Both of these things are the consequence of moving charged particles. And a moving charged particle uh, can be in the form of a current carrying wire. So let's say we have a loop carrying 68 amperes counterclockwise. Okay, so I know that the current is 68 amps. And I also need to know, in order to calculate the magnetic field at the center, I need to know the radius of this loop. And let's say that it's 3.1 centimeters. I'm going to determine the magnetic field right at the center there. And it's a fairly straightforward calculation using the special case formula for magnetic field of a loop. Keep in mind that there's special case formulas for long wires, uh, solenoids, um, single particles moving around, things like that. So it'll depend on the on the situation. So don't overgeneralize this formula. But the magnetic field, use a symbol B for that, is mu naught, a fundamental constant associated with magnetism. You'll see it all over the place when you're studying magnetism, times the current divided by twice the radius. Okay, so uh, we know the current, the radius, and the fundamental constant. So we can just chuck those numbers into that formula. Pretty straightforward. No algebra needed. We'll have to do one unit conversion since we have non-SI units for R. Okay, but 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 is mu naught. We know that the current is 68 amps. And we know that the radius, when we convert, would be 0 0.031 meters. Okay, so uh, we'll throw those into calculator and we get 1.38 times 10 to the minus 3. SI units are Tesla. And that's a typical number. Uh, often you'll get milli or micro Tesla. One Tesla is actually quite a huge magnetic field. So this seems like a reasonable number to get here. Uh, the second half of this is to determine the direction. So you might pause the video, apply whatever right hand rule you've been taught. Uh, there's lots of different versions of them. But uh, apply the right hand rule to this physical situation. And then what would be the field at that location. Okay, direction. Okay, so the direction would be in the plus z direction or coming out of the uh, out of the page. So uh, we'll go ahead and write that down. Plus z. Okay, so we've got the magnetic field at this location, but in terms of testable predictions, this is not terribly interesting because Maybe we could put a magnetic field detector in there, uh, some sort of device that measures magnetic fields and check if that number holds true. Um, but what about uh, you know seeing something happen? Well, let's let's say we take a proton and of course it's hard to see a proton, but um, let's say that we fire a proton through this region of space. Can we determine the force and therefore the acceleration of that? Uh, of that object using the laws of physics. And we can't. So because we know the magnetic field, we can determine the force on a proton. Uh, and we'll just make up some numbers here. We'll say that the speed of the proton is 2.3 million meters per second. Okay, And it's uh, firing straight up. So you know the, the velocity vector uh, completely. And then we should be able to pr uh, calculate the force. So magnetic force on a moving charged particle has a formula. Okay, if you have a current, if we put a, another second current carrying wire here, we'd use a different formula. But because we have a uh, charge, moving charged particle, we use this formula. So magnetic force is equal to the charge times the speed times the magnetic field. All these are uh, positive numbers. We don't if, even if it was an electron, we'd still put a positive number. Uh, so magnitude of all these quantities times sine of theta. So theta is the angle between the two vector quantities here, uh, the speed and the uh, magnitude of the magnetic, uh, sorry, the velocity vector and the magnetic field. So uh, don't drop off this, uh, this term here. That's important. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, chuck in numbers into this formula. So magnetic force would be, OK, you should know the charge of a proton, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. I gave you the speed, 2.3 times 10 to the 6. The magnetic field, it, we uh, calculated earlier, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 3. And then sine of what? Okay, Think about the velocity vector. Think about the magnetic field vector. What is the angle between them? Okay, 
Go ahead and pause the video, think about it, commit to an answer. Okay, it turns out that it's 90 degrees because the uh, magnetic field points out of the page and that's in the plus Z direction and the velocity vector points straight up. So uh, it just happens to be in that direction. And so those two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So sine. So you would have gotten a right answer if we dropped this term, but I think it's a bad habit to drop that. I think you should explicitly state that you think if uh, the angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so I throw those numbers in, into a calculator and I threw an SI unit, so I'll get SI units of Newtons and I get an answer of 5.07 times 10 to the minus 16 Newtons. Now, of course, that sounds like a tiny force and it is for a macroscopic object, but it actually wouldn't be for a, uh, for a microscopic object like a, like a proton. And I'll show that in a second. Um, but let's first get, uh, get the direction of the magnetic force. So um, apply a right hand rule. There's lots of different uh, versions of them. Okay. And so go ahead and pause the video. Think about it. Use your right hand to, uh, to determine the direction of the magnetic force. Okay. And it turns out that it is in the plus x direction. Okay. And one way you can check yourself, it's not a guarantee, you make sure that the magnetic force is perpendicular to both the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. So right hand rule just uh, tells us that it has to be either in the plus x or, or sorry, that rule says it's either plus x or minus x. The right hand rule resolves the ambiguity between uh, positive x and negative x. Okay, so I've got the magnetic force completely described. Now we could certainly calculate the acceleration of the proton, assuming that this is the only, uh, only force. So let's uh, use Newton's second law. So uh, net force divided by mass gives us the acceleration. This is the only force. We just chuck it in for F. I mean, normally there's a summation here, but uh, not in this case. Nothing to add up. 5.07 times 10 to the minus 16. And I divide by the mass of a proton. 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And I get that the proton will have an acceleration of 3.04 times 10 to the 11 meters per second squared. And of course the acceleration has to be in the same direction as the force in the plus x direction. Okay, so just to sum, uh, knowing the rule for a current carrying loop, I determine the field that it generates, uh, magnitude, and then use right hand rule to get the direction. Uh, then we have a calculation of the force on a moving charged particle at the location where we determine the force. Uh, keep in mind that this is not a fixed field, so it won't be a fixed force, fixed acceleration in this case. We only know what's happening at this particular moment. And then second law gives us a, a clue as to what the acceleration will be, okay? All right, so lots of different variations on this, but kind of the same procedure if you're uh, working out this type of problem. Calculate the field, calculate the force, and then if you're asked to do so, then calculate the acceleration. Okay, thanks for watching.